Hey you guys, my name is Rena Wells and I'm here to do the Dark Works episode number three in regards to Twin Flames, Karmic Partners, Attachments, Addictions, Dark Curses, Hexes, that type of thing. So if you are new, welcome. Um, please listen to episode one so you can understand my journey and why I have the high spiritual rank to be able to talk about these things and my abilities and all of that because I did not wake up in this incarnation. I've been awake this entire incarnation. So I've had deep insight from the time, my earliest memory of how to work in energy. And so when people work with me in coaching and whatnot, I bring down customized teachings for next steps that are going to resonate with you deeply if you're willing to really look at yourself and if you're really willing to do that shadow work. So let's get started because this is a very hot topic in the New Age community and I don't work with energies in the New Age community per se. I kind of sit above that realm and I want to talk about Twin Flames. Uh, first of all, they are very high level uh, connections. There are um, a whole bunch that came down to help ascend the planet and a lot are going are not going to make it and some are going to make it now the whole purpose of the twin flame is not necessarily to be in a physical 3d union the energies that you feel within the twin flame is a deep activation within your soul to know the balance of the union and so what I work with especially I work with divine feminines is to utilize their gifts, their psychic abilities, their high priestess status. Because if you are a twin flame, you have a high spiritual rank, you have a high priestess status. That means that you have this knowing deep within you of the other realms. And you always have. And this is something that's not prominent in the New Age community. A lot of it is psychological jargon, uh, psychological uh, ways to maneuver through the mind. But if you're a twin flame, that's not going to resonate for you. You're gonna that's why you're gonna be drawn to my channel. Because granted, I'm not gonna play into the labels if they're twin flames or not, but playing in the mind is a very human condition. Okay? High priestess status, high spiritual knowing plays in your empathic abilities, your natural sensitivity. That's what we are all born with. That's the only way that we're able to discover our gifts are how we communicate in tel telepathy wise also and through feeling in the womb and we all have this but again uh, go back to and listen to episode one because I, I talk a bit about that and in episode two in regards to your natural abilities and how they be how they get covered up okay again this is a dark agenda that we're living in in the, these times we have fallen in consciousness. We are walking through massive shadows. Some, we have to look at it this way because some are lost and they will be lost and they will become empty vessels for darker entities to, to manipulate. And especially if you're on the twin flame journey, you are divine feminine. You have a high priestess status to be able to walk through those realms and you're going to be tested time and time again. The creator is going to show you both sides of the coin. I like to talk about both sides of the coin because it's very important that we do not become construed in our vision in regards to what's light and dark, okay? If you're a twin flame and you're a divine feminine, you have a high spiritual rank, that means that you are to master both sides of the coin, okay? And that's the third energy is to rise up above the, du the duality of the coin. And that's what I do. That's what I help my divine feminines to do is to really empower themselves so they don't become distorted feminines and clingy, jealous, envious, angry, manipulative, working in dark magic. That's what karmic energies do. And so during the separation stage, we're going to go into this, is an opportunity to purify yourself. This is what's happening with both twins. Now, masculines fall deeper into the darkness they just naturally do because divine feminines are able to hold the balance at the 3d plane if you can picture the horizon we stand right at the horizon meeting father sky and we're able to pull in the high vibrations of intuition 
because when we birth our babies, we're, we're transmuting souls from the heavens into the earth plane. That's, that's our gift as a divine feminine. And you don't have to be able to birth babies to be a divine feminine. I just use these examples so that you can understand the imagery and the resonance in the imagery and the examples that I give. So when you're sitting there and you're transmitting those energies, you're able to uh, ground and birth new things in the 3D plane. Now, what's happened is the divine masculines have been taken by darker entities and forces and are basically sitting in the gates of hell. They really are. And they can mimic twins, your masculine twin. They can mimic uh, and house other entities and bring in um, pieces of your, even your twin soul that's trapped in these dark energies and put them into other people's vessels. And they will come towards you and they will act and feel like a high vibration because they're trying to mimic your twin flame who's already who's trapped in darkness. Now, there's nothing you can do for your twin. And when I use the examples of Osiris and Isis, you know, that she went into the gates of hell and put her twin back together. She, uh, Isis came through to me today to do this as well, because um, there's nothing wrong with working with deities. You have to be able to own your power so that you are not worshiping a deity. Okay. You only worship the one God and that is your connection. But other gods are here that have abilities and gifts that can guide you and bestow information to you. But again, humans like to become attached. And this is where darker forces come in. You cannot become attached to anything in your outside world. It's very difficult, including your children. I'm even going to say that. And, and this is not from a place of narcissism and not feeling and not having empathy. This is a fine discerned line of knowing your power and how to keep yourself pure so that your cup consistently flows, like fills up from the heavens, that unconditional love that you're tapping into the well of love from the divine and that it constantly overflows. So you're not tired. You're not ex over exuding yourself. You're naturally flowing. You're allowing, you're giving. And that's when you manifest at your best, fastest rate. And that's when you're tapped in to what's meant for you. Now, if that is your twin flame, then they will mirror and elevate. But we have to remember, too, that based on free will choices, and if your twin does not level up and they continuously choose darker, the dark entities, the dark patterns, even though you have done your work, Divine Feminine, and you know that you've healed and you're like, where is my twin? Like, this is not showing up. It means that they're consistently stuck in a place of darkness and everybody has to elevate themselves out of that. Nobody can do that for anybody. Uh, Isis was only able, thank you, Isis coming through right now, um, to put Osiris back because he had become humbled to the power of the divine feminine and had let his ego go because that's how broken he was. Now, a lot of these masculines, not all, right? You know who, who your masculine is. During the separation process and the purification, they are refusing to be purified, some of them. They want to continuously live in their addictive worlds. They want the money, the greed, the foundations that they've built. Uh, they don't trust the divine enough to come in. They don't believe in the power and the magic of this union. And so they continuously play and go back and forth and get stuck in their head and just even though they know, even though they have that knowing. And the reason for that is because, thank you, Spirit, is because they have to die to the ego. They have to die unto the divine feminine. Divine feminines are the temples. You know, even when um, an ayahuasca is coming through, when I do ayahuasca, she is the temple goddess. She is Mother Earth. She is nature. You know, you have to humble yourself to the medicine in order to gain insight. And it is the same constitution of all divine feminine energies and the temples that were built in Mesopotamian times and Sumerian times and even further back, hundreds and thousands of, uh, I think it, I think the most recent was like, I read an article recently, 14,000 years ago of, uh, in the Amazonia of these goddess temples. So I think it was about 14,000, it could be 12,000 years back, which is one of the oldest humans, right? that they have found in South America. And they worship 
the divine feminine energy because and they welcome their their egos being smashed they welcome the the mind of the masculine to be smashed to understand the power the divine feminine holds because remember in order to birth and in order to grow anything you have to surrender to a growth process your baby when we do tamaskal you know you're in a which is a sweat lodge you're in the womb of the mother it's hot it's confined it's dark you're sweating and if you and i've seen people get anxiety attacks in a temescal you know because you have to be able to surrender i remember they're bringing up an incident where i was in a temescal and there was a masculine there and he was having mass i could tell in his breathing he was having massive um, about to have a massive anxiety attack and i reached out in the dark and i just touched his hand and I held his hand and immediately he started to relax because I hold divine feminine energy. And it is that surrender to the feminine. He surrendered to the energy that I gave him. And that's what we all do. Masculines and feminines must do that because we all grow out of the womb. Okay. Is to surrender to the feminine energy. That is, that is the first step. And if masculine energies are unable to do that with their divine feminine because they would rather be right in a situation they can't be wrong their pride's in the way then that's the suffering that they're going to continuously choose in their life and there's nothing that you can do about that divine feminine because they have to evolve out of that and so the purification process is knowing where your attachments are knowing where darker forces can get into you and especially if you are in a situation in a twin flame situation separation where they're in a third party who does black magic and hexes you know divine feminine that is to use that dark energy to transmute yourself to empower yourself in those dark places because you have a high spiritual rank what i'm seeing and the spirit really want to bring this out for divine feminines. What I'm seeing in the twin flame community is this dramatic anger that's happening. Okay. And I'm not saying that to be mean to you guys. I get it. I've been there, been there, done that. I understand it. It is a natural human response, right? But we have to start to distinguish two different boxes here. Your spiritual self, your soul self, and your human self. Remember, we identify as humans, we attach to everything. So there are going to be parts of your human self that you're not going to want to surrender. And I and I see this time and time again, you know, and this is why I bring people in. And, you know, if you guys want to do ayahuasca with me, I am going to be starting to run ceremonies coming in the fall and things like that. So I'm putting some um, groups together for that or even psilocybin ceremonies once I return to Canada. Um, so hit me up with an email and I can put you on a waiting list. But this is the whole instance of why I bring people into this place of letting go of that human conditioning because we have to, we're in a, in a meat suit. We are in a body that are, that's filled with chemical responses. Okay. Just because you feel something doesn't mean it's true because when you feel something from the divine, it's so pure and so loving that you don't question it at all. So the moment that you get any sense of doubt, okay, in any type of connection, and you're doubting it, that's a, that's a hole. That's a, a loophole in your etheric shield from your empathic nature, from your energy system telling you, okay, that there is something happening here. That's allowing something else in. Can I trust that? Because when you know it's from the divine, there's no darkness there. There's no mistaking that. And I always use the example of, you know, when a baby's first born, you're not going to want to throw that baby out. You're not going to want to do anything evil. You can't even have an evil thought to that baby. People who have evil thoughts, like they seriously need help. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm not saying that that doesn't exist in this world because it does. Unfortunately, there are dark, but they are completely housed by demons and dark entities, right? But you know the majority of humans they have a decent heart okay they're not going to kill that baby as soon as they come out and do horrible things to it there's a purity that's there that we have as a human race and that is triggering the natural and your inborn innate abilities of empathic sensitivity and it's that 
space of sensitivity and purity and innocence that we are wanting to expand in the collective, right? This is not something that we are able to hold on to or to maintain that energy frequency. It's very difficult, but this is why divine feminines are here. And so while you're in your purification process and while you're in separation from your twin, it is to do that work, to come into that place of purity. It is possible, you guys. I'm doing it. It is possible. I'm not saying that you won't have human response systems or anything else. It You will, but they will be so far and few in between that you'll be like, oh, my human, my human suit attachment <laughs> got triggered. Okay, let's back up. And it doesn't mean that that's something to heal in the moment. That's to acknowledge I need to surrender that human peace again. And that's okay. That's okay. I still have a human side. But where most of humanity, especially those on the twin flame journey, are getting attached to and are getting siphoned by darker forces is when we live in that trigger response place from the human condition. Okay, and then we justify well, that well, they cheated on me, they did this to me, they lied to me, they they're back and forth, they're inconsistent. And then, you know, there's other teachings, it's like, if it's in them, it's in you. And granted, that is a healing process to a certain point. But I'm seeing a lot of divine feminines that I've been working with in my coaching that aren't seeing that in themselves, that they have healed. And they're like, so where's my masculine? And this is why I'm putting this video out, because I felt that collective energy come through the reading, the quick read that I did this morning of divine feminines feeling like, okay, like, I'm doing my work, I'm here, what is going on? And the reason why is because of that free will piece. And it's also because you divine feminine with your high spiritual rank is to recognize that you have to transmute those energies, the psychic attacks, the things that come in that trigger that human suit into a cause and effect response. Okay. And that's the first clue. That if you're having that response while you're in separation is to seriously look at it. Because if it is happening and frequently or you're not able to move out of that vibration, that means that there there is a pattern within yourself that has not fully been surrendered to the creator. Okay. And that that can take, you know, even if you do coaching with me, sometimes I have to take clients to a, a retreat. And, um, or I have to take them, come to a retreat that I run myself and do that to break the psyche because mind patterns and manifestation, all this stuff is that, that happens to like, if you're listening to this, you've, you've already tried all that. So, okay. That's for the, the humans that are just figuring out the manifestation and working in the material realm, right? This is for the betterment of humanity. This is for the earth. And this is to bring up the rest of humanity. And, and this is why you're a twin flame. Okay. And when you can start to transmute those human conditions, right, and get into that healing so that that is sealed off, you will then realize how good mission feels you will start to realize how the divine is working magically in your life in so many ways that you'll notice where you were so focused on the masculine, you know, and in wanting that union, of course, because when you were first activated, I mean, it's the most beautiful experience you'll ever, that you ever had at that point in your journey, Spirit is saying. There's so much more to come. And Yes, it would be very super powerful with your twin if your twin decides to surrender to the divine feminine and to, you know, move in that way with you. That would be super powerful, right? And it would be cosmic. But we don't know what that experience would be like. We only know, right, divine feminine is what has happened. And we can't hold expectation and hope for something that we don't even know what it's going to be like, truly and really, right? Because... You can only go by your experience right now based on the past. But if you keep focusing on the past, that means that you're going to pull into lower vibrations and depression because depression comes from being stuck in the past and anxiety comes from to over focusing on the future. Meaning, am I going to make it? Am I going to book clients for next week? Am I, where's my money coming for rent in a month? Oh my God. Like, I don't know if I'm going to have money in a month or whatever. When we think in futuristic ways and bring worry that causes anxiety in the future. 
Divine Feminines, you're really here to be present with those energies, transmute everything that comes to you, surrender it to the divine, and then work with your natural abilities to gain your psychic development, your empathic abilities, the and, and how to be okay sitting in those dark energies. Because I know my divine femmes, you guys get attacked by these karmic energies and by the lower realms a lot. And especially if you're you're a twin flame and your twin is sitting in, in the pits of hell. You know, um, you're going to feel what they feel. You're going to experience the same entities that play between you and your divine masculine or vice versa. That's just what happens. Right. And that continues to happen until you're able to stand in your power against those darker forces. Truly. And when you're able to stand up in those darker forces and you elevate and you surrender, you will hit that new vibration of mission and divinity and synchronicity and and more and even other soulmates that would just fit you better in your life. OK, who, who are going to have everything that your twin wasn't able to provide. Right. Don't worry. Spirit always hears you. Spirit always sees all and knows all. And all of those dark forces will be able to detach from your energy field and move back to the karmic and, and your masculine. And I'm going to be honest, you kind of want that to happen. And in, not in a mean way. But if karmic justice is to come around, is for the divine feminine to stand very powerful in her high priestess energy. That's just how it is. And whatever karmic energies play out and go back to the divine masculine for treating a divine goddess that way and for playing with dark entities in karmic energies that are housed by several demons, that is something that um, may be the breaking point that they need. And if it is, great. And if it isn't, they will be stuck in this entire lifetime. They will not ascend. Okay? Spirit has come very clear that they will remain. They are locked in a timeline that they will not ascend. And especially if spirit now brings you a sacred partner, you know, you're living in your mission, your great things are manifesting, things are you're feeling free, you're feeling good. Not that you don't love your masculine, you hold that space, but there's going to be a whole bunch of new things, a new partner that you can create your mission still together because you're still holding the blueprint. Remember, divine feminines, all you need from your masculine is the surrendering peace, you know, to come into a dynamic partnership and they build, you know, what the divine feminine brings down. The divine feminine is the architect and sets the blueprint. And the masculine is the 3D builder, you know, is the contractor. But spirit is like, divine feminine, you hold the power. <laughs> like, I can get you into the contractor, okay? <laughs> like, and I know that that's a hard place because, again, you'll know when you're ready to hit, when you hit that point, right? And um, I can tell you, it's a beautiful ride. Like, my, my journey has brought me to South America and my alliance with um, some high political people here to, to help save the medicine in the rainforest and help save all indigenous tribe medicine in the rainforest and to ha have a place that's housed where National Geographic can come and do read like high potency thing. I never thought were possible. You guys is what I'm working on here. And that was not that those were my dreams. And I, and I had an attachment, for example, that my twin and I would be able to do that. There's no way my twin, <laughs> there's no way. I mean, um, there's still an opportunity like you know i hold a place there that yeah we could be friends and that but you know even a partner has been presented like this is new vibrations that are so high and so massive that's going to create so much healing to the planet and that's why you're here divine feminines right you're here to be completely in that place of flowing so that the mission can come down so that you are bridging heaven and earth and it's too bad. So sad. I understand that, that, that some masculines are going to make it and some aren't, you know, but we have to use the twin flame journey as a way to transmute into your best self. And that is each twin's individual right to choose that. The divine feminines, and this is the women that I work with, they're using that to catalyze them into this higher power, into their best self, into their gifts. And I'm creating a mystery school this summer. My membership is, is, um, falling away because I'm going to be creating an alchemy school to help divine feminines rise in that power and how to work with energy properly not this new age stuff of let's cut ties and put protection and no this is about going deep right I'm here to go into the wounds of 
where the holes were created in your etheric shield because if if you have wounds inside of you that's what creates um, a portal for darker forces to come in and it gets very difficult to be able to close those things off and they psychologically can damage you these darker forces and so um, and how to work properly properly in medicine too that's that's a whole other thing because a lot of people get siphoned working with shamans who work with darker guides darker energies and entities i've seen shamans work with dark entities they're just dark and they do black magic and they siphon their hosts. They siphon and cut pieces, cut their souls and shatter them in the energies. You have to be very careful who you work with in medicine. You need somebody who can hold the highest container possible for you. Okay. And um, I've even been with a shaman in the rainforest who, in the Mayan rainforest, who loved my power, wanted to have a relationship with me. And tried to siphon my visions. And Ayahuasca showed me. She's like, watch how he's sitting next to you and he's siphoning his vision. And he put a vision of me and him building a home together and being together. And I'm like, this is not my vision. <laughs> they have siphon that way, you guys. And I want to bring that awareness out because real true healers bring in the highest of creator force energy. They don't play with deities. And that's why, you know, I'm not saying it's not wrong. But um, you have to know your power very much to know where you're being siphoned, okay? So hexes and things like that that are happening on your twin flame journey, they can't affect you, you know, if you own your power. And when I say own your power, I'll, I know a lot of people just throw these terms around. But, you know, whatever scares you with darker forces, and let's just, let's just say this, whatever scares you in regards to darker forces, um... So, for instance, for me, you know, I've always been scared of possession and um, poltergeist activity. Well, you can bet your rat's ass that God sent me right into poltergeist homes to clear right off the bat. And um, I have been, uh, dynamic entities would try to come into me and take over and siphon me since I was a child. I've had to fight these things and and owe my power against it, you know, Um and it it hasn't it, it stops now now they can't bother me but um because i know my power again they know me they they're afraid of me now but i went to, now they're talking to me they're like oh really and i'm like yeah you can go you can't taunt me but um they leave me alone because they know they know that they're not going to get anywhere that i'm highly protected by the creator and but it took me a long time to work through those things right that's why my messages are so clear because it's right from source it's from your our one creator and these hexes and these the dark magic and things like that is being done because spirit only puts you into places that God knows that you have the ability to transmute it. You're that powerful. And, you, and it's part of your mission. Whatever dark comes to you, right? Whatever healing you have done is for you to teach others and to guide others back home to the creator, back to the one God. And this is your path of healing to show people how to do it your way. Because however, you have a tribe, right? You are here as a twin flame. You are a divine feminine. You have these amazing gifts. It's for you to discover them. And these darker energies are to be used as catalyzing forces to push you into your greatest self so that you can fully hone those gifts and then teach others how to do it. And that is how your vibration is going to change and that is how you're going to heal and get into mission work as well but again it's it's getting into those healing places looking at where darker forces really scare you the most because your biggest fear is going to be your biggest power the biggest fear against dar about darker forces um you know looking at yourself in the mirror um i know some people can't do mirror work because they're afraid why you know there's this type of self-love there's something attached to you that's telling you not to look at your your divinity there's people that have body issues and weight issues who can't accept their body the way that they are there's sometimes entities attachment in your lineage that way there's addictions there's whatever it is there's a dark grid work that pulls all of us in because again we're walking in the shadows of darkness here right because that's covering up the earth magic you have to kind of find your way through the fog to find that real alchemizing pure energy that can manifest things very quickly in your life right not 
from mindset oh change your thoughts change your mind like I mean that stuff was great 10 years ago when we were first starting with manifestations here um but it's not going to work for you guys anymore because that keeps you trapped in a material basis of wanting to manifest things I'm here to help you divine feminines and even divine masculines um to elevate yourself into a place of not desiring things but energies that you want to experience. I want to experience harmony, bliss, love, abundance. And when you... <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. My device got a little too hot there. Aha! Being near the equator, um, it overheated and stopped. But I listened to back to where it stopped and I didn't talk very much after that. And um, yeah, if you want to manifest those things, um, the abundance, the frequency, and the energy... That is the focus of using feeling and empathic nature, right? It's not about mind stuff with old law of attraction stuff. Change your mind and connect to the feeling. Because I'm going to tell you um, what I have discovered in my own journey is when you think first and attach your reference library of the mind to an emotion, it will be ego every single time because your mind is conditioned. Your mind is not powerful. Your intuition and your soul sits in your gut, in your gut knowing, right? It's about feeling an empathic nature. So the more that you get into a place of knowing the frequency that you desire, okay, it is then to untrap the mind that keeps you from experiencing that frequency. And that's the healing work that I do. Now, I don't want people to get trapped in healing. You can get trapped in healing. I have more to heal. I have more to heal. It's more or less about um, healing, integrating, healing, integrating. Okay. You will hit a point when you have completed your healing. Okay. Everyone's different. I had a lot of ass healing to do. <laughs> I'm I'm completed my healing. It's done. Right. It is now learning how to integrate and move into the energies. And that's where I, I lead my divine feminines is, you know, get into the serious alignment of uh, moving out of old ways of doing things into thought that then creates emotion, because that will always be an ego based action. OK, or a, a manifestation and get more into the desires of what you want. And when you get more into the frequency of feeling that you can let go of anything else of what you thought was going to bring you your manifestation and your happiness. So for instance, you know, in your twin flame union, you want the union, but that is a material tangible um, form. It's a word. It's a thing in your mind can attach to, right? Your mind can't attach to what harmonious love and bliss and God's love feels like. That's not something your mind can attach to, right? That's um, something that the ego can't attach you. So if you're working from those places, um, then it's going to manifest, maybe not with your twin flame union. It might with your twin flame union. It depends on what timeline you guys are in and how much um, the separation and purification and healing has happened. But, you know, if you're on a twin flame journey and it's not made for right now and you have to move into a new union with somebody else or... Um, another vibration or work with other people or whatever it is that you're doing, you will be guided because you are moving into a place that feels good. That is your highest desires. And because you want to experience that over a particular thing that you are putting an emotional attachment to. Do you see the difference? And that's where I take a lot of my clients. It's like, okay, like if this is the thing, we have to let go of the thing. We have to let go of what the mind rationally wants is going to bring us happiness because then we're not allowing spirit to come in with the vibration. Because remember, the universe works with vibration, not things. And so this universe and creator is going to scan the scan the earth plane and be like, where where does, okay, Mary Jane wants, you know, uh, to experience financial freedom. Well, if we go and God's going to be like, okay, if we go and their mind is set on this one person, okay, let's see where that, okay, well, that's going to take this person to do this, A, B, C, D. Oh my God, that's going to take 26 steps that could take another 15 years. I'm just using this as an example, right? Or, you know, God's going to look around and be like, okay, but that, they're the, oh, that vibration's, 
or they're going to be like, sorry, my phone keeps going. So I'm going to just wrap this up. They're going to, God's going to be like, oh my God, there's a, that vibration that's only in four steps over here. Let's bring that. And that could be a completely different new timeline, right? Because remember, we're shifting timelines and moving things on a consistent basis. So I'm going to leave it at that because um, my phone keeps going with the heat. I don't know why it's overheating. There's a, probably a lot of energy that I'm bringing through for you guys. But again, I'm here to help you guys move into your greatest power, learn about your sensitivity, your gifts, your natural abilities that you were born with, and especially if you're a twin flame, how to transmute those darker energies and how to move out of attachments and how to leverage dark entities to work for you, right? Because you are the light and you are the goddess and you are the high priestess and those darker forces can bow to you. Literally, they can bow to your power. And I'm here to teach that. Okay, so I am sending you so much love, you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you really enjoy this. Would love to hear your comments on that. And if you want to work with me, hit me up with an email. I have coaching sessions. They are channeled specifically for you and your soul frequency and your connection to the one God. And I'm able to pull in some really tangible teachings that are going to help you move through your spiritual uh, journey, you know, and I'm going to warn you too, like if you want to work with me, you got to have a spiritual routine, guys, you got to be serious about this work because I will take you deep. All right, so much love. Don't forget to like subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.